234, the potential of a localized charge distribution. So we know that um, we can relate V and E. I'll just write the equations over here on the side. So E vector is negative the gradient of V. And we discovered that the Laplacian of V is equal to minus the charge density over epsilon naught. And you know this we got from the divergence of E, which is the Gauss's theorem in vector form. Uh, rho over epsilon naught, okay. So using these three equations together, um, we the question is like, if we know what the charge density is, how can we find out what the potential is? And once we know the potential, calculating the electric field should be rather trivial. Um, so if we start with a um, point charge, Q, and then we think the reference point um, O is out there at infinity, then we found earlier that the potential, um, any point in the, um, the potential at any point in space is given by the rather simple formula, one over four pi epsilon naught Q over R, the length of that vector to the position. And um, so using the uh, principle of superposition for several point charges, so the potential at some point, well, I'm gonna to try to use the same notation here. Uh, he uses P, ah, let's use P. P vector is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught, and the sum of all the charges, and the length of the distance between whatever point we're interested in where the charge is, where R is defined as um, P vector minus uh, the position of that vec of that charge. So, and then of course we can turn this into a continuous distribution. You know, one over four pi epsilon naught, and the integral of all space of rho over the distance to the point charge um, of d tau. Distance from the particular point we're doing the integral at to the point that we're interested in. And, um, you know, this is, if you remember what the equation for calculating the electric field was, very similar, but there's this pesky um, uh, r hat over r squared rho d tau in there that um, made the integrals difficult to solve. So we've gotten rid of that difficult part. Now we're dealing exclusively with scalars. Life gets a lot easier. Um, and likewise, you can figure out that for a line charge, it would be one over four pi epsilon naught, the integral of that line charge density over the distance uh, dl. And for a surface charge, of course, the parallel is the rather simple um, sigma over r dA. Okay, so now we know how to calculate the potential given a certain charge density. Um, and the, the warning, the real caution here is that O is at infinity. And if you have one of those weird textbook problems where you have a charge that extends out to infinity, then you can't really use these formulas. You have to rederive them on your own for whatever situation you have. Um, so remember that O has to be at infinity for these to work. Um, the second interesting thing about this is if you remember back in chapter one, I talked about the Helmholtz theorem. Um, this is that equation from the Helmholtz uh, theorem that will give you the potential that will describe the vector field, right? Where rho over r is actually the divergence, or rho actually, is the divergence of that field that you're given. So charges, the divergence of the electric field, that's what charge is. And um, the electric field is the gradient of uh, the, the potential. And the potential is the integral of the charge. We have this circle we just built for ourselves. So rather simple, rather fun. Um, hope that helps. Bye.